then Ricarda, I will uh, quickly present you uh, and then the floor is yours. Uh, so Dr. Ricardo Brauchmann works as a data station manager for the social sciences and data archiving and networked uh, services, the Dutch National Center of Expertise and Repository for Research Data. Ricardo is involved in various international projects, including CESDA and SHOC, um, where she's working on data, on research data management support, open science, engagement and training activities. Ricarda, thank you for being here and the floor is yours. Thank you for the introduction, Marike, and thank you for inviting me. So I'm happy to talk to you a little bit about the SESTA Data Management Expert Guide. And um, in the beginning, Marike also mentioned that some of you might already be familiar with this tool that SESTA has, but um, this will be just a quick reminder of this uh, tool that we've been developing in the SESTA training group. So I'm just one of the authors. This was a communal effort with uh, various people involved from SESTA. And I will give you a brief overview and focus on the data discovery, archiving, and publishing routes that the data management expert guide uh, shows you. Uh, so if you can go to the next slide. So SESTA is not only trying to make data available to others through the SESTA data catalog, but we also hope to help people to make data more fair and also enable researchers to manage the data in such a way that the data can be made reusable and then also be found through the SESTA catalog. And what we have created in the training group is the Data Management Expert Guide or the DMAG. So it's a guide on research data management, uh, mainly um, targeted towards early career researchers in the social sciences, but also uh, all of the materials are licensed under an open license and can be reused by trainers. So if you are a data supporter, you can reuse all of the materials to educate researchers in your own area. And um, what we've done is we've collected a lot of information on research data management in one central place. Um, we worked on this between 2017 and 2020, but this is continuously being updated. So we'll really try to make this something, a resource that is um, up to date and available. And the uh, link is also in the chat, but it's sesta.eu slash DMAC. It's free to use and I would encourage everybody that has not yet seen it to check it out. If you go to the next slide. So the SESTA Data Management Expert Guide follows the data lifecycle that you can see here. So it really addresses all the different aspects of research and research data management that you have to think of through a project. And in this, uh, in this presentation today, I wanna to focus mainly on the publication and discovery. So Marika, if you can go to the next slide. Um, these are the two chapters that are mostly relevant to the topic that we have today, which is obviously COVID-19, but also especially finding data for co on COVID-19 um, that can be reused. And what is important to make data reusable is to think about the publishing and the discoverability of the data beforehand. And the SESTA DMAC can give researchers um, guidance and some ideas on how to plan ahead for this and how to publish your data so that it can be made uh, available and is reusable. Uh, next slide, please. So um, yeah, I basically mentioned this already. So in order to for this data to be found and for this COVID-19 data to be useful for others, it needs to be FAIR. And FAIR is this um, very popular acronym that I'm sure most of you are familiar about, but it's about making data findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And what the data management expert guide does is it tries to really give concrete examples and concrete guidance on how you can make your data more fair. And um, in this case, we'll focus on the publishing and uh, archiving aspects and the discoverability. So next slide, please. Yeah, so if we're looking into the sort of last phase of your research project when the data has been collected and you want to archive and publish this. This is um, a separate chapter in the data management experts guide that gives information on, on the one hand, the archiving, so the long term preservation of data. So making sure your data is, is safe and securely stored and also accessible or um, archived for the long term. So for instance, in, in good, good standardized formats, but on the other hand, also publishing the data. So making it findable and accessible for others. So these both aspects are described in the DMAC. And I will just give you a brief teaser of the information you can find in the DMAC and a couple of the tips that uh, we have listed there for people. If you go to the next slide for me. 
So the, the, one of the things that is important if you think about archiving and publishing is selecting the data for publication. So uh, we've heard also from uh, Julia before that they, for instance, make different files available, a scientific use file and a more open access file. So really thinking about what part of data you, can, you want to publish is very important. And also in what way you are allowed to share the data and whether you, for instance, have consent for sharing the data from participants. So these are things you can think about beforehand when you when you are starting your research project to already account for the possibility of making your data available and publishing it afterwards. And there might be indeed options to publish various data sets for different or various versions of your data set for different audiences. And one of the things that I want to mention is that it's also possible to archive data and store data for the long term without making it publicly available. So often when we talk about fair data and open access, uh, we hear we hear concerns that researchers think we don't want to make our data available just to anybody. But the archives that CESTA is working with have a lot of different options of publishing data for various uh, groups or with specific licenses, making it available to only uh, other researchers, for instance. So there are lots of ways of um, increasing the the availability of your data without making it publicly available to everybody. Next slide, please. So when you are uh, when you have thought about what data you have and what you would and can make available, there are multiple ways to publishing data and the data uh, management expert guide goes into the various ways. So you can see them here. Um, some people publish their data through journal supplementary materials. You also may have an institutional data repository at your uh, local institution. There are some general purpose repository and domain specific repositories. And um, they are also what we call trusted domain specific data repositories or TDRs, trustworthy digital repositories. And this is what I want to highlight in particular because that is what um, we are also working on in the, in the CESTA consortium. If you can go to the next slide, um, because if you, um, if you choose to publish your data in a trustworthy digital repository, that ensures that you, your data is with a certified archive. And it also means that um, it will be handled with um, with people that have uh, a community that follow specific community guidelines and also offer support for storing and and um, uh, archiving data alongside the community standards. So if you have a, a trusted or a certified archive, and in in our case, often our archives are certified with what is called the core trust seal, um, you have the the guarantee that you are your data is stored safely and also for the long term. So this certification ensures that the archive um, meets certain criteria so that you can be sure that your data is stored in a safe and trustworthy way. Uh, we also offer curation of the data. So we transfer the file formats, but we also help with, for instance, adding vocabularies, what has been mentioned already by Helena. The SESTA archives use specific terms that are added to the metadata. Uh, of the data sets we receive so that data can be indexed and made available and findable again. So a lot of these things um, you basically get for free as a researcher if you come to a, a, a trustworthy digital repository and one of the CESTA archives um, who is offering all of these. And what I mentioned just um, previously as well is that we also offer different publishing options. So often you can choose whether your data is openly accessible if it's a not a data set not containing personal information or it's an aggregated data set, but you can also make data available with restrictions and also uh, you gain the possibility to uh, make it available to certain people. If you go to the next slide. Um, so yeah, basically when you choose to publish your data with a trustworthy digital repository, that helps you to make your data fair already. You, um, in addition to the curation that I just mentioned, you also get a persistent identifier for your data. So you can share your data in a transparent and persistent way. Um, and we make the metadata discoverable. So the SESTA service providers are all integrated into the SESTA data catalog that Ellie has presented. So when you store the data at one of the SESTA service providers, it will also be discoverable across Europe through the SESTA infrastructure. And um, you can determine on the conditions on which your data is um, made available, but also the licenses and the reuse agreements. If you go to the next slide. 
And um, the data management expert guide provides much more information than what I'm sharing you in this brief presentation. So you can find there information about how you can find a suitable repository. And Ellie has mentioned the Re3 data instance, for instance, already uh, earlier. So there's also more information about this in the data management expert guides. Uh, it also discusses special regulations when archiving personal data. So the GDPR is an important aspect that is covered in the BMAC. Um, also information on access conditions and licenses and how you could choose which license is applicable for your data set, but also how you can promote your data set after publication and in what way it might help researchers to gain um, credits for the data that they're publishing and sharing with others. If you go to the next slide. So this, um, this was what I wanted to share with you about the publishing chapter of the Data Management Expert Guide. And then just briefly about the discovery pay, uh, um, chapter, which is um, a little bit of what, has, what Ellie also has already uh, covered in her presentation. So if you go to the next slide. So the, there's a, a whole chapter dedicated to data discovery in the Data Management Expert Guide. And um, the chapter follows these five steps of data discovery and going a little bit more into detail in uh, how you can develop a picture of what you actually need, locate the appropriate data resources, and then also work on search queries and search the data resources. I saw that there was a question in the chat also about, uh, I, I'm looking for a specific data set or a specific type of study, how do I do that? So the data management expert guide gives you hands-on um, advice on this. So if you, after this webinar, still have questions on how you can find data and set up your search queries, I would encourage you to check out the DMAC and see if this will help you as well. Um, the, yeah, thank you. You can actually go to the next slide. Um, so the, one of the things is also that the data archives, which we've, I've mentioned in the, in the publishing chapter, uh, are also data resources. So um, in particular, the trusted domain repositories make metadata of the data sets that we hold available as well. And you can in the BMAC find information on the SESTA archives, but also other um, resources such as um, other uh, European or uh, European social science studies and archives that are in, not within SESTA, but also non-European data archives and other important data repositories. So the DMAC tries to give an, uh, an indication of where you could find data within SESTA, outside SESTA, internationally. So this is really, if you're looking for data for your studies, this might be a good resource for you. Go to the next slide. Um, and again, I cannot cover as much as uh, is in the DMAC. So I would encourage you to look into what the DMAC has to offer. So there are various examples of, for instance, data resources for aging, for international comparison and some of the studies we've also discussed today because a lot of the studies have been um, collecting data on COVID-19 as well and there's also uh, examples on other curated data sources and the, importantly there's also a special section on uh, using social media data which is sort of a new type of data that is now often used in computational social sciences and we have a special section on that as well. If you go to the next slide. Um, I think this is the last slide of this presentation that I have. So I would encourage you to go to the data management expert guide yourself and find out more. So the webpage again is sesta.eu slash DMEG. And um, this was just the teaser of the information that uh, you can find there on publishing, archiving and uh, data discovery. So thank you, Marika. Thanks a lot, uh, Ricarda. I think it was very interesting also to see the, the amount of services that you provide uh, in making the data available for researchers. So thanks for that. Um, do, do you want to go directly to the, the next uh, presentation? Yes, I, I can, if that's okay with you. I think we are a bit short on time. We so are a bit continue. short on time. Yeah, we're a bit short on time, but I, I would really like to, to invite you to present this. Uh, I don't know if there's some things that you could maybe shorten a little bit and then uh, and then we go on to to talk to Otto. Yes, I will I Thanks. will try and keep this short. So what we wanted to do after introducing the data management expert guide is give you a little bit of a, an idea of how this um, how this works from an archive perspective. So I work at um, at Dance as Marike mentioned with this which is the Dutch uh, SESTA service provider. And myself and Otto from AUSA will give some examples on how the SESTA archives support data publications in the social sciences. So next slide. 
Um, just really briefly, so DAN stands for Data Archiving and Network Services, and we are a, a data archive in the Netherlands. We are also a trustworthy digital repository, so we're a certified archive and we are a service provider of SESTA. So if you can go to the next slide. Um, what we do is we deliver various forms of data archiving services, and at the moment we are actually uh, changing our system to a fully dataverse based um, repository system. So we work with domain specific data stations where I'm involved in the social science data station. And these data stations offer researchers the possibility to archive and publish their data. And we provide the support for them to do that in a, in a way that is um, compatible with the community standards, including the standards um, from SESTA. And we also have a dataverse NL service which is a repository service for our national institutes. So some of the universities we have in the Netherlands, they would like to have their own data repositories where they can manage the deposits from their researchers. And we offer a sort of community service where we host a database, um, uh, host and coordinate the database instances for these national repositories. And um, I want to give you an example of one of the data sets that we have and um, how we manage that in Dataverse. So this is, and I can go, I can be really brief about this. So this is just uh, an example of a COVID-19 data set for which researchers had approached uh, DANS as an archive because they had uh, specific requirements. And this, um, this data set was then um, published in the Dataverse NL instance that we especially created for these researchers from the Neville Institute. And the request that we had was that data, they were collecting data sets that were updated on a weekly basis. So they needed an instance where they could update uh, and upload data sets and publish them every week. And the archive that we uh, previously had did not have this sort of option of creating new versions in a very easy and, and sort of uh, user-friendly manner. So what we've done is we set up a Dataverse um, uh, Dataverse environment for this specific research group for them to be able to publish this data. So if you go to the next slide, and I'll just show you. So this is if you would go to the Dataverse NL uh, web page and you would uh, type in COVID-19, you would find in our case uh, 59 nine results now, and the numbers are really always growing. I think more and more will be added to the SESTA catalog as well. And then if you see um, the third data set, I think here, if you go to the next slide, is the one that I wanted to talk about, or the, the fourth one. So this is, um, if you go to the next slide, this is a data set, um, and I put the DOI here as well, if you want to look at it yourself. It's, um, it's an open access data set where the researchers had 380 general practitioner practices, and they provided weekly data on observed symptoms and diagnosis. And that was at the time at, of, at the beginning of the pandemic where COVID-19 tests were not yet available. So the researchers calculated based on the information they got from the GPs, the COVID-19 symptoms to get an indication of the amount of COVID-19 cases. And this was something where the researchers wanted to have a system where they could easily and, and fastly publish this information so that it could be reused. And we uh, have set up this um, Dataverse with a Dataverse instance in our Dataverse NL services um, and our Dance Dataverse for the Neville researchers who are the researchers involved in this project. And if you go to the next slide, I just have a little bit of extra metadata just to show you what it looks like in our system. So this is the citation metadata where you can find information about the persistent identifier title the subject as well. In this case, it's um, it's more under the medical and health and life sciences, but I think COVID-19 data is really very much interdisciplinary. So I thought it was relevant for you to see this as well. And then the next slide, um, just to show you here that the data files are directly ac accessible for anyone who's interested in this. And they have been um, adding data sets. I think there are 24 files. At some point, they, they stopped the measures because COVID-19 tests were available. But they have uh, 24 files. So every time a new, um, a new version could be added to this data set. And I think that was what I wanted to tell you. Um, so feel free to contact me for more information. I'm also still in this, uh, in this webinar till the end. So if you have any specific questions, just let me know. Thank you, Marika. Thanks a lot, Ricard. I think it was a very interesting example that you showed, and it's nice to see also what it looks like uh, on a detailed level. So thank you for that.